everybody. Sorry for that slow start. I still have a weird setup. Oh, you know what? I'm not wearing my earbuds. Holy shit. Okay, now you can probably hear me better, um, at least I hope you can. So welcome to my special Halloween stream. Uh, I decorated my kitchen a little bit for it because I love Halloween. Um, what we are going to make today for dinner is we are going to make taco stuffed bell peppers except we are going to cut little jack-o'-lantern faces into the bell peppers because it's cute as fuck. Um, so first thing we're going to do is get the bell peppers all taken care of so that that's all ready to go when the filling is ready to go. Uh, so first thing you need is a thing to put the bell peppers in when they're all done. And some bell peppers. I didn't think this through. There we go. I like to get a bowl out to put all of the bell pepper guts in. This is the very fancy knife my husband got me for my birthday. So you want to cut the top of the bell pepper off and you want to be able to put it back on like a lid later. So then we're going to take the guts out. And get as many seeds out as we can and all the weird white stuff. And then just nestle that right in the pot that you're using. And then you want this like the lid. So get all of the seeds off of that too. I'm going to get all the guts out of all of them before I start trying to carve little pumpkin faces in them. Hi, Kit Kat. You can't be on the counter right now. She knows she's not supposed to be on the counter, but cats are like teenagers in that they know the rules, but they don't care. Like a cat knows when it's breaking the rules. You see it in their eyes when you go, hey, stop that. I was too busy to do my own grocery shopping for this, so the person who picked up the peppers for me did not get three orange peppers, but that's okay. Ooh, this one has a thing growing inside. See, I messed that one up and I accidentally cut it too close to the top, but that's okay. It'll still do its job. Just it won't look quite as nice as the other ones. That's okay. That's not... Uh, I guess I instinctively cut the pepper in half because that's usually what I do with bell peppers. So I guess I'm making three stuffed bell peppers. And I'll save this guy for some other time. 
I'll chop them up and put them in a salad or something. Dip them in hummus, whatever. All right, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna get a different pot to cook them in then because that one's a skosh too big. So instead we're gonna use this one to hold all three of them. Since my brain stopped working for a moment, I need my little parent knife. There it is. So we're gonna carve a little jack-o'-lantern face into this. save the face pieces so that I can put them in the future salad with this other bell pepper that I messed up. Not the best, not the best jack-o'-lantern face, but it is a jack-o'-lantern face. And we're gonna nestle that right there. And we'll do the same thing with these other two. Hopefully do a little bit of a better face. There's a lot of reasons to be disappointed about how this year has gone. I won't deny that I'm really sad uh, that we don't really get to do a lot of really like cool stuff for Halloween because it was going to be such a rad Halloween you guys. Like it's on a Saturday, there's a full moon, there's like it's like daylight saving times or whatever the next day. So we were gonna get a whole extra hour of Halloween, but instead we have this stupid fucking pandemic and this stupid election, and it's just a nightmare and a half. But that's what this stream is for. It's important to make good things out of the bad whenever you can. Here's another good little face. My antlers keep getting stuck on my overhead thing here. I do have plans tomorrow on actual Halloween. Uh, the people that put on the local nerd convention are going to be putting on like a Halloween event. Um, and in all the Facebook posts about it, they're saying to wear masks and stuff. So I think it'll be okay for me to go. And like really, if nothing else, I can go decide that I don't feel comfortable and then come home again, which would be disappointing, but at least it would get me out of the house for a day. I tend to be a bit of a homebody, big surprise. doing surgery on a bell pepper. Or like trying to carve one of those really tiny pumpkins you get at the grocery store. There we go. Good enough. I kind of gave him a little bit of a joker scar going across his face, but otherwise he's cute. See? Alright. So now that the bell peppers are out of the way, we're gonna put these aside for now, and then we're gonna turn on the oven. That way it's nice and hot when everything's ready to go in. And we're turning it up to 400 degrees. So now the next thing we've gotta do is cut up an onion. 
or if you're like me and you're a baby, half of an onion. I never really liked onions when I was a kid, but I really like cooking, and there's a lot of stuff that you can just, it's just not the same without onions. But I have concluded that the best way to deal with it is to just use less onions than your recipe calls for. I need the sip shot. The only time I will use like a vast amount of onions is if I'm caramelizing onions, because caramelizing onions are the bomb dig caramelized onions are the bomb diggity. You cannot go wrong with caramelized onions. You just have to be prepared to stand over like stand in your kitchen for like 45 minutes. So, I talked about this on my last stream, but the best way to cut onions is to leave the root intact and you pull the gross outside skin off, but you leave the root there, that way it holds everything together. And then, you make long cuts through it like this, making sure not to go all the way through and don't cut yourself. And then you hold it, can't see very well, you hold it and then make long cuts like with the grain of the onion, I guess. That way it kind of looks like planks almost. So you cut through them that way. And then you can go against the grain of the onion, and what you get is a really nice dice. And then sometimes after I'm finished cutting the onion this way, I'll go back over all of the dice bits with my knife again, that way they're even smaller. That's another thing I figured out, is that I don't want, like, I definitely want the flavor of the onion in the dish, I just don't want, like, big old chunks of onion in my face. That is too much onion. Oh, wrong file. There we go. Viewer. I can't tell who you are, but I'm glad to have you here. Alright, so we're going to let that onion happen in the pot for a while. We don't really want them to like darken or get caramelized or anything. We're just looking for them to soften up. Um, because that helps, like, make the onion less intense. I'm gonna add some salt to it. And while this onion is happening, we are going to peel some garlic. Which, I think I left my garlic in the pantry. I'll be right back. After I check and see. Oh, hi! I'm glad you like my costume.
much like when you need to uh, get the skin off of your garlic, the best way to get the bulb of garlic apart is just to smash it a little bit. It'll just kind of pop apart. It's whatever. There we go. That is a reasonable amount of garlic. And then we're going to squish it. And then we can take the skin off. This is a recipe that I am adapting from BuzzFeed, because say what you will about BuzzFeed, they sure know what they're doing with BuzzFeed Tasty. good cooking YouTubes to watch because I was following Bon Appetit really closely. Um, like, I would still, like, die for Claire Sappets. Um, but then everything had, like, everything came out about how they were underpaying all of the people of color that worked there, like, and weren't, you know, monetarily compensating them for being in their, like, big named chef's videos and all of that, and then, like, that came out right after, uh, the pictures of the old editor-in-chief came out of him and his wife, presumably, doing, like, a brown face costume. So, like, there's a lot to unpack there. I haven't watched a Bon Appetit video in months because of this, and I definitely miss a lot of the chefs but I have to respect the chefs of color and the other chefs that left because of all of this. Like, A plus guys, good job. Um, I don't remember where I was going with that. Oh, but I need to find more cooking YouTube to watch. I know that there's like a bajillion out there. Like, I feel like cooking YouTube is probably to YouTube what video games are to Twitch. There's just, there's just so fucking much of it. Um, this is my garlic crusher because there's a lot of stuff that I will do in the kitchen, but I hate dicing garlic. Uh, fresh garlic is sticky and I don't like how it feels on my hands. And it's just so small. I try to avoid having too many like devices in the kitchen that only have one job, but this one's worth it. It is a very important job. The only problem with it is that it leaves like chunks on the inside here, which I then just kind of scrape out with my finger. There we go. And I'm gonna put, oh, there's some more bits here. Give me that garlic juice. All right. Now garlic actually burns really easily. So you don't want to have the heat on too high while all this is happening together. Um, and burnt garlic gets really bitter, so it's just, like, some stuff is still pretty good when it's burnt, but not garlic. I'm going to add a skosh more salt to this. One thing that I really learned from all of the cooking videos that I have been watching for the last forever is that... For most of my life, I have probably been chronically undersalting things. Because I thought, oh, I don't really like stuff when it's too salty. So I guess I just won't add very much salt to stuff. But it turns out that salt also, like, brings out the flavor of dishes. And it helps balance flavors out. And, like, that's why you need to make sure you still add salt to sweet things. Because it both, like, it counters all of the sugar which then brings out the flavor of the sugar. It's like a contrast thing. Um, but just by the nature of salt being salt, it also just does a lot more than that, so. 
you still have to find the right balance and to like not actually oversalt anything because that's still not a great idea. But it is more important than I previously thought it was. All right, so that was a can of diced mild chilies. We're gonna let that happen together for a little bit. So here I have cumin, uh, I don't need the paprika, cayenne pepper, oregano, pepper, and I got salt in this little thing here. So that's gonna happen together for a little bit and then I'm gonna add some stuff to it. Um, I tend to not actually like measure my spices. You just you just put it until it feels right. This is my general combination for when I'm making, you know, like white person Mexican food. I'm pretty sure this is what comes in a package of taco seasoning. I guess you can tell it's right when it makes you sneeze. So that's a good sign, I would say. Um, this is coming together nicely. Now it's time to add the meat. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more oil, that way the meat doesn't stick too bad. There. And I'm using ground turkey to counter the deeply unhealthy macaroni and cheese that I made last time I started making dinner. And to assure the internet that I do eat healthy food. Now this is almost definitely going to be too much meat to fill up three bell peppers. But what that means is that I now have burrito, once I'll have burrito filling for like the rest, for like four days. I can go get some tortilla chips and have lazy nachos. I've got some like really small tortillas hiding in the carb corner so I could just have really tiny tacos. You know, the good shit. I'm gonna blow my nose and wash my hands really quick. Let me take out my ear so you don't have to have me blow my nose right into your ear. I realized as I was going to blow my nose that uh, I have makeup all over my nose. So let's find out together whether or not I fucked up my makeup. All right, I still look okay, cool. I'm gonna do is 
grate up some cheese because cheese, actually the first thing I'm going to do is straighten up this counter a little bit. It's a bit of a mess. pretty much already watched all of my favorite Halloween movies, by which I mean I already watched uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas like twice, and I also watched um, Over the Garden Wall, which if you haven't seen Over the Garden Wall, please find a way to pirate it tonight because it is so fucking good. Like, it has no right to be as good as it is. There's a joke I've seen on Tumblr about it where it's like, over the garden wall is incredible because you can watch the whole thing in like an hour and a half and then you will not stop thinking about it for the rest of your life. Which is true. Um, but I did buy, I was looking at the Nintendo like download store yesterday on my Switch and I, they had a, uh, all of the, well not all of them because I think another one just came out, but the three um, Amnesia games. So it was The Dark Descent, Justine, and A Machine for Pigs. I'd never heard of Justine before, but I knew about the other ones because my friend Willie is super into like spooky games and stuff. He is much more into scary things than I am, but I'm trying to get outside of my box a little bit. So I'm probably going to play some more of that tonight. Uh, which I am pretty excited about. It was, it's been pretty fun so far. Um, I'm sure I'll have to play it with all of the lights on and with some non-spooky music in the background because I am an easily frightened baby, but is the season to be a frightened baby. Oh man, I'm so hungry. Um. Excuse me. Alright, now I'm going to grate up some cheese because what is anything that's like a taco without cheese. talking last time I cooked about the video games I've been playing, and most of what I've been playing, uh, other than me starting The Dark Descent today, is Pokemon. I started playing Pokemon Shield really just like two or three weeks ago now. It's such a short Pokemon game, and I think that's because they made it so much easier to level up all of your Pokemon, which like is kind of a mixed bag. Like, it's really cool. Definitely my least favorite part of the game was struggling to level everybody up at a reasonable pace. And they gave you some other ways to level up your Pokemon easier. So, like, it's pretty cool. But also, I just want it to last longer. I love Pokemon, but I've never really been into competitive Pokemon. So once you finish the main storyline, I'm just never sure, like, what else to do. 
the best thing I can think to do is like try to catch a bunch of other Pokemon, but then what am I going to do with this PC full of Pokemon that now no longer get to live their life to their full potential because like I just wanted to catch them. Okay, nothing important. All right, so the meat is just about cooked through. I'm probably going to add some more spices to this, but I'm going to let that keep doing its thing while I drain out this corn and these black beans. Yet again, I did not think this through. That's okay. I just wanted it to be cute. I just really love Halloween, and this is the only corner of my house that you were going to see, so I wanted to put some cute decorations up. So I have my very small little colander that is perfect for draining out cans of stuff and also for cleaning like mushrooms or whatever. beans in here. Now we're going to mix all this together and add some more spices. Yeah, see, this, pot, this pan is so full. Um, I'm going to have taco filling for days. Next time I go to Target, I'm going to have to get some tortilla chips so that I can have lazy nachos. But that's fine. That means I won't have to cook for a few days. I really like cooking, but it's difficult to cook for myself and I'm the only one home right now. So making food that makes a lot of leftovers is the way to go. And then if I get tired of the left, or what I do a lot of the time is like, if I make something that makes a lot of leftovers, but I'm confident that I will get tired of them before the leftovers like like, there'll be too many leftovers left, and I'll get tired of it and be sad that I wasted all these leftovers. I just give the leftovers away. I made that mac and cheese last week, and I was just like, I'm going to give, like, I say, I saved, like, three. I had the serving and a half that I ate for dinner that night, and then I saved two other servings, and then I just gave the rest of it away to my friends. I didn't put extra pepper in this. said I got this recipe from BuzzFeed Tasty uh, or at least I'm adapting it from BuzzFeed Tasty and they want you to put like a whole jar of salsa in this before you put it in the peppers I'm gonna put a little bit of salsa in this because it helps to like bind it all together Oh, that was 
sneeze again. Sorry. Now it took, it didn't take me as long to put this together as I thought it would. Um, I hope I can find a way to entertain while this is in the oven, because it's going to be in the oven for like half an hour. Uh, okay. I'm going to cut that heat. Let's go ahead and straighten up again so I have some room to work. in the bottom because who doesn't love cheese? Sorry I'm sniffling in your ear. I'm reluctant to blow my nose again in case I mess up my makeup. All right, some cheese on the bottom. I shouldn't have thrown that spoon in the sink. Uh... All right, and then you're going to take spoonful of the taco filling and very carefully deposit it inside of the peppers. And just keep smushing it down. Until you can't add any more. probably should have boiled or sprayed this pan before I started filling these up. But it is too late now. That's fine. It'll just take me a little bit longer to finish or to clean everything up later. I hope everybody, I hope some of you, or I mean, I guess there's only one of you in here, but I hope you get to do something fun for Halloween. I wish there were more people in here so I could ask what everybody's, like, favorite movie and stuff is. <laughs> Maybe someday. Maybe if I keep doing this next Halloween, I'll be able to ask some cool questions and connect with my audience. Yeah, see, I have so much of this stuff in here, it would take literally, like, six bell peppers to, to get all of this used. But that's fine. I could probably also freeze it and save it that way. I don't know. I'm just really reluctant to like put this kind of food in the freezer because I don't know how it's going to be when it comes out. <sighs> Sorry about the sniffles. My therapist is always really surprised when I talk about sharing my food with people. It's because I'm just very particular about how fresh I want things to be. Okay. Especially my baked goods. Alright, cool, 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 cool. We are gonna put some more cheese on top of the, on the top of their heads. Like cheese hair. And then we put their little tops back on. 
I promise I will blow my nose in just a sec. I'm sorry if this is annoying you. Throw little tops back on. And then you have some delicious bell peppers that are gonna go in the oven for half an hour. I'm gonna try desperately to keep you entertained for half an hour after I blow my nose. really hard not to mess up my makeup. And let's see if it's okay. Mostly, yeah. Um, I could do, I could like straighten up the kitchen while I've got you guys here, but, or while I'm here, but that would probably not be entertaining. Let me look at them. A lot of the programs I have on it are convinced that this, are convinced that it's a mobile device, but it's not. It's a little laptop, but because it's convinced it's a mobile device, it like, like Discord doesn't work the same on it, and some other programs don't either, and it's just, like, there's a reason. It's, there's a reason that I use my phone to record, to like record these live streams versus my laptop because it just works better on my phone. Like I'm pretty sure my phone is more powerful than my laptop. I try, I have to have, like I have a therapist and the first time I met with her, it was over Zoom and I tried to use my laptop for it and it just didn't work. I couldn't communicate with her. She couldn't communicate with me. I have to use my phone to use Zoom to talk to my therapist. It's the dumbest shit. Um, but the laptop does mostly do what I need it to in that it can, like, I may not be able to record directly from my laptop, but it still runs all the other stuff that I need Twitch to do. Um, someday I'll have a nice laptop. Today is not that day, and that's fine. I guess I'll put the rest of this taco stuff in a container and put it in the fridge. Cause I got, let me put my gloves on. Oh my antlers, heck. Let me show you how much of this there is left in this cast iron skillet. You see, right here is the stuff that I pulled out to fill the tacos up with, or the tacos, to fill the peppers up with. But it's fine. I'll just put the rest in the container and I can eat it later. Pro tip. Save your takeout containers. It's free leftover storage. All you had to do was buy too much Chinese food. If it's sturdy enough to hold hot Chinese food, it's sturdy enough to hold hot leftovers. tempted to eat some of this right now. I'm so hungry. I wish I had thought to buy the day to buy tortilla chips yesterday. Oh well.
This is just apple cider. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're yelling at, but I'm glad to have you here. Uh, the bell peppers are already in the oven. I don't want to cut off the stream, even though this means I have to figure out how to entertain you for like 25 minutes. Um, since you're here, what is your favorite spooky game? I just started playing uh, The Dark Descent. You know what, I'll just move this laptop over here so I don't have to keep turning around. Um, I just started playing The Dark Descent, and I'm not very far yet, but it's got extremely good atmosphere. Um, and my friend Willie, who loves these games, says that, like, it's just really good at building a really tense and paranoid atmosphere. Like, there's probably only a monster chasing you, like, 20% of the time. But it's impossible to know when that 20% is, so you just feel like, oh god, where is it? Like, just the whole time. Um. So... But it's, it's really cool. Uh, and then earlier today, Polygon did a stream for... There's like a series of spooky games that are kind of short. Let me Google it really quick. The Dark Pictures. Okay. It's a, it's a spooky survival game. Um, and it's called The Dark Pictures Anthology. Uh, I don't know what the first one is, but my housemate, uh, hold on. Okay, sorry. Uh, I watched my housemate play and some of her friends play through Man of Madon, which was one where it was like a group of friends who were on a boat and they were like, it starts with them doing a dive down to this like crashed World War II plane. Um, and uh, then they get kidnapped by some pirates and they find this spooky ghost ship and it's all kinds of crazy spooky stuff and is it, is it magic? Is it a cult? Is it like experimental drugs that the government tried to hide? We don't know. Um, but that was really fun to watch. And so earlier today, Polygon, I love Polygon, did a stream uh, with like the second or the next story in the series, I guess, um, that was called Little Hope or something like that. And it it's really interesting. It starts with this dysfunctional family in the 70s in their house. Um, and they have adopted a spooky little girl who is friends with a demon or something. Uh, and this little girl and her demon friend set the house on fire and kill her whole family. And then the next thing that and then it flashes forward to these people uh, who just got in a, they were riding a bus for like a college field trip kind of thing. Um, and the bus crashed because the bus driver swerved out of the way to presumably avoid hitting the ghost of this little girl that appeared in the road. Uh, and now they're all stuck in this spooky town and it's, it's very silent hilly. Excuse me. Uh, like they're stuck, they, there's like the scary fog rolls in and they're like, well, let's just go back to the bus and wait. Somebody will come drive by the bus and everything will be fine. And so like they walk back towards the direction of the bus, but they're stuck in the fog. So they get like immediately turned around and like, how could this have happened? We were walking in that direction. How did we find you guys again? What's going on? So they're stuck in this spooky town. Um, and I, they, they stopped streaming that not like maybe like an hour in so they didn't get very far but it looked really cool uh i might look up some more of that 
and watch that instead of my video game? I don't know. I mean, you, maybe I'll watch Hellboy. That would count for Halloween, right? I don't know. Usually I'm not into like really scary things. I've just always been kind of a baby. My preferred, like everyone, everyone has some way that they like to be recreationally scared. It's just something about the human brain that's just like, yes, we need to practice being scared for the real thing. And so some people are really into horror movies. I like roller coasters. That's what gets me my, like roller coasters and carnival rides. That's what gets me my adrenaline. Um, but I guess because of the plague, I can't go to carnivals and stuff this year. So maybe I'll get that adrenaline high via scary movie instead. The problem then comes when like, like I said, I'm the only person at home. So what's, I don't want to be spooked all by myself. But we'll see. Like, I know what to expect from The Dark Descent for the most part. Like, I looked up what the monsters look like, that way I don't get too startled, like, when I have to look at one. But IDK. And tomorrow, I'm driving out to, I talked about this already, I'm driving out to Pensacola for a Halloween event, but I'm excited to go, and then I'm also going to be stopping by one of my friend's house to drop off, basically to do kind of a reverse trick-or-treat. Um, she wasn't sure she was going to be able to do anything for Halloween with her kids because they had a COVID scare in, one of the, in her kid's classroom, but they got tested and everybody came back negative, which is great. Um, so they get to go do something. But because there's a plague going on, she can't, like, actually take them trick-or-treating, which is disappointing. So I bought some candy for them, and I guess I'll just show up to their house as a candy witch and, like, tell her little boy that I cast a spell to find out what kind of candy he liked, or something like that. Um. <sighs> Halloween this year was going to be so good. And like most other countries don't really celebrate Halloween and so of course like every other nation has a leader that knows how to handle a fucking pandemic and so they're more or less okay right now. And then there's our like shit show of a country whose president is just the literal worst. We could have been fine by now, but we're not. But it's okay. Halloween lives in your heart. I'm not a big partier anyway. So one of my like one of my old coworkers is having a Halloween party and I'm just like my dude. Or more accurately, like I'm friends with his wife on Facebook and She seems disrespectful of her husband because, like, they have too many pets and she keeps getting more pets even though he's like, we don't need more pets. And then she's just like, too bad, I got one. It's like, why would you do that? And I also think she's an anti-vaxxer and I'm just like, you have kids. You're becoming a nurse. What are you doing? So they were having a Halloween party yesterday, I think. And oh, no, today is Friday. So it's probably today. But like... Why? Why are you gonna have a bunch of people in your house like drinking booze and breathing all over each other? You're gonna get the plague, your kids are gonna get the plague, all your guests are gonna get the plague. Just like a local super spreader event. Why would you do that? Um, which is why like I have, I have this cute costume today. Uh, but when I go out tomorrow, I'm gonna just be a witch because, like, I can't really wear a mask with this. Like, the whole, the, the special part is the makeup. Like, the, the, the headband is too, but the makeup really sells it. So since I have to wear a mask tomorrow, I'm just gonna be a witch, which is fine. 
because I have so many cute like witch related dresses. So just, it's fine. Since it's the uh, people that put on the local nerd convention that are putting on this Halloween event, I kind of wish I could wear like one of my cosplays, but like, and by cosplay, I mean I have a bunch of outfits that kind of count as a closet cosplay. The closest one to being a real cosplay is my apocalypse outfit, which is still kind of just a closet cosplay plus some accessories because it's just like an old pair of black jeans, my Nuka World t-shirt, uh, good shoes. Like, that's about it. And then like, I got like a leather, like shoulder pauldron thing and stuff. And I have a plastic pit boy that I got from the Halloween store a couple of years ago. So it's, I would wear that if I had like a gas mask to go with it. Because that would really sell it, especially this year. Um, but I don't. So, but hey, there's gonna be like, uh, there's gonna be people like selling stuff at the event tomorrow. So if I can find a booth that just so happens to be selling that kind of thing, I could always pick it up. Um, and if not, I might look for one online because that would sell that cost. That would really sell that costume in general. What I've been doing with it previously is just like kind of doing a Furiosa like face paint, um, which also works really well, or it would work better if I didn't have to wear glasses. Uh, sorry, I keep getting distracted by my laptop because I have the feed going there too when it's a few seconds behind. It's interesting to see what I look like. <sighs> I wish there were more people here. I was so excited about this. I mean, again, I haven't been streaming for very long. It's not like I do anything really special. If the world hasn't ended yet by next Halloween, then I'll do another stream or another ho special Halloween stream. And hopefully I'll have more people here. Maybe I'll even have a better setup. That'd be pretty rad. If I ever like, what's the next level up? I don't remember. It's like not partner, but associate. Maybe if I ever make associate on Twitch, I'll start a Patreon or something and then I'll see if I can use that to like raise the money to get like a proper setup. That might be cool. Um. <sighs> I also wish I could drink alcohol. I would love to put some fireball in this apple cider, but because of my antidepressants, I can't have alcohol anymore, which is really disappointing because Last general election, I spent election night getting absolutely hammered. I just got, I made some pasta for dinner. I got super, super drunk and just watched movies all night because I in no way, shape or form wanted to be able to like know what was happening about the election. That was gonna be a problem for the next day, Sam. And like, that was it. Uh, this year, I have to be lucid because I can't, like I can have like half a glass of wine and that's it. Um, but I'm still, one of my friends is going to come over and spend the night with me because I don't want to be stuck at home by myself having anxiety attacks about the election. Uh, so we're going to watch movies and I'm going to make pizza and I'm probably going to do another stream of me making the pizza. So that'll be fun. But I'm just... wife doesn't happen to watch this stream later. That would be awkward. <sighs> Let me think. Oh, 
you know what I forgot to do today? I was gonna make like a cute bag in which to deliver all of the candy to my friend's kids. Which I guess I could still do. So mean. Like six o'clock. I could do that after dinner. I was hoping to find a nice big like trick-or-treating bag at the grocery at Target yesterday but they already have most of their Halloween stuff gone and the Christmas stuff up. So I couldn't find anything good. I almost bought like a paper gift bag for it, but it was like $4 and I was like, not for $4. I'm already spending, I already spent more than I should have anyway. Um, mostly I spent more than I should have because I got an impulse purchase of, there was that uh, His Dark Materials TV show that came out on HBO a while ago, um, which I am pretty sure I heard good things about. So I caved and bought the like set of the first season because I wanted to watch it. So I could also watch that tonight, even though it's not really Halloween-y. Um, You know what? I should have asked my friend Melissa to come over because she is so good at scary movies and I could definitely have her put on like an old, I could have had her put on like an older scary movie that wasn't going to actually freak me out. And then I could have had somebody over for dinner, which is always nice. Like I'm definitely being careful about COVID, but I don't really do anything risky and I hang out with a very small circle of people and whenever I'm in public like not with that small circle of people I'm wearing a mask so like it's probably safe to hang out with people when I'm with my friend Jessica I usually wear a mask because she works with the general public at Starbucks uh, and customers are the worst, so who knows how many of her shitty customers are wearing a mask. Especially since I live in Florida and people don't believe in signs down here. I feel like I've done a good job filling up the time. I've been talking for a straight like half an hour. Maybe I should have started this stream later, and that would get me people to talk to. I wish I had the kind of- I'm pretty sure Nintendo doesn't make it easy to stream. Pretty sure I heard that. So I wish that I could stream playing with the Dark Descent. But I'm not that cool yet. I can't stream Switch stuff. Maybe someday. I started streaming uh, Dragon Age the other day, and that was super fun. I got like nine people watching at one point, which is exciting for me. So I'm hoping that if I keep streaming video games, then, like I kind of expected to have more people watch my cooking videos just because like, I feel like there's probably a lot more video game streams happening than cooking streams. So I thought people would be like, oh neat, a new cooking stream to watch. I should check that out. And then, I mean, I guess this is only like my third cooking stream, so I can't be too disappointed. But I am a little bit disappointed. Um. Mm. But I also just started, so maybe in a couple of months I'll have people watching me do stuff every time I do stuff. That would be nice. Dragon Age is A+. Uh, 
I desperately need more information about Dragon Age 4. They did release that like four minute behind the scenes video about Dragon Age 4, which then like the entire Dragon Age fandom like rose from the grave and just started filming at the mouth. Um, which is really exciting. Like, please give me Dragon Age 4. Give me the option to convince Solus to stop being the way that he is. I know that half of the fandom wants to destroy him, and like part of me wants to destroy him, but I really just like... I want to be able to convince him to not do what he's doing, or like... It can't... It can't just be like... If, if the climax of the game is stopping Solus from doing what he's doing, then Dragon Age 4 would really just be a rehash of Dragon Age Inquisition, and nobody wants that. So, what's probably going to happen is, like, halfway through the game, Solus, you're going to have the opportunity, Solus is going to do the thing that Solus thinks he wants is going to happen. The difference is going to be whether or not you can, like, convince him either before or after that it was a bad choice. Like, the reason Solus is doing this is because he thinks that he has to. It's not that he wants to. He's not, like, out for power the way that Corypheus was. That's what makes Solus and Corypheus such a, like, delicious foils of each other. He's doing this because he feels like he has to and not because he wants to. So, like, if your Inquisitor was on good terms with Solus and were good friends, or, if, you know, you were playing a female elf and you were lovers, like, if you were man- if you managed to convince Solus that even without the- even, like, with the veil intact, this world is still worth something, then I think you'll have the oppor- you'll be given the opportunity for Solus to redeem himself. But if you and Solus didn't get along, if you were kind of an asshole to him the whole time, uh, then he'll be like, yeah, fuck this world, it's not worth a thing. All of you people are morons, fuck you. Then he'll probably just die the villain. But most of my Inquisitors are friends with Solus. So I think other than my, other than my elf that romanced him, I think my favorite Inquisitor has been my dwarf. Um, because she was good friends with Solus because dwarves aren't supposed to be able to do magic. So, like, having this magical glowy thing on her hand, super fucking weird. Like, the dwarves aren't supposed to be able to dream. And the first, like, friendship cutscene, I guess, you have with Solus is you going into the dream of, like, exploring Haven. Like, I imagine that what happened with that is Solus was like, hey, listen, I want to do an experiment and all you have to do is take a nap. And my Inquisitor was like, hell yeah, I'll go take a nap. I work super hard. So she went and she took her nap and then she had that crazy dream. And then she woke up like, Solus, what the fuck was that? I'm not supposed to be able to dream. What is this? So she got along with Solus because she did somebody to explain what all of this magic stuff was because I am but a simple dwarf and like, I hit things with an axe. Fucking what is this? Um, welcome. You guys have come in after everything is in the oven and it's gonna be in the oven for like two more minutes. But I'm still really glad to have you here. I am yelling about Dragon Age. <laughs> Cause that's the other thing that I've been streaming. Uh, <laughs> the, the Inquisitor that I'm playing right now, I am intending to not get along with Solus. My two goals with this playthrough is to romance Colin, because I've never done that before, and to make Solus hate me. Um, which is gonna be difficult, because I'm pretty sure with the last playthrough that I did, I made all of the major choices that Solus hates, but he still, like, respected me as a person. I don't know how I achieved that. Which means that what I'm going to have to do is when I get his personal quest where I have to deal with um, his spirit friend that got bound and turned into a demon, I'm going to have to kill the demon and make him hate me. 
which is going to be really hard because the voice actors in this game are really good, especially Solus is, and it's going to hurt my soul when he is sad and angry. But I'm still, ex I'm still gonna try. I'm gonna do my best. Uh -oh. hmm. The other thing I really liked about my Dwarf Inquisitor is that she romanced Iron Ball, and that was such a delicious size difference. Um, and just so good. I love Iron Ball. He's such a good boyfriend. There's Twenty seconds left. Yes! Give me the peppers! I'm so hungry I could pull them out of the oven with my bare hands! Yes! I'm sorry if this is a bad noise. Okay. We got us some peppers. get myself a plate. peppers don't have very sturdy bottoms, so he fell over. But we have a jack-o'-lantern! Ha-ha! He's going to be delicious. I don't have any avocado for it, but I should have gotten some. But instead, I definitely have some sour cream. sorry to the third the other viewer that just showed up uh i definitely scheduled the stream to be an hour to be like two hours but it didn't take quite as long to cook this as i thought it would um and i'm hungry and you probably don't want to listen to me chew so i'm gonna go ahead and sign off um thank you so much for joining me it was really fun to do this i love cooking and i love cooking on stream and decorating my kitchen and dressing up was a great idea and super fun. Uh, I am going to be doing another cooking stream on, I don't have it scheduled yet, but I'm going to be doing one for sure on Tuesday the 3rd, which is, depending on where you're at is the U.S. general election night. So come join me and we can all be anxious about the outcome together. Um, one of my friends texted me recently and wants me to teach them how to bake, so I will probably be doing a series of, like, intro to baking type stuff, which could be fun. I gotta figure that out. Write up a lesson plan or something. Um, I don't always schedule out my video game streaming. I just kind of do that for funsies, so... Uh, look out for that too, I guess. I'm gonna start scheduling them a little bit just because, like, Dragon Age is an ongoing story and I don't know if people would want to, like, miss an episode or something. But, yeah. So it was super great to have you guys here. I hope you all get to do something fun for Halloween and I hope you get to watch some scary movies or play some scary games tonight or something. And tomorrow. So... Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to walk around and turn off the camera. Bye, guys.